Matt and folks, so it's Jacob from Black Apple Studios. So, here we are today. First video going up, hopefully. Uh, when it'll go up, I'm not entirely sure, but we're going to do an unboxing of the Radeon R9 290X from Asus, which is the Matrix edition. Um, there are a couple of editions of this the Radeon Platinum, uh, sorry, the Matrix Platinum, and then just the Matrix, which obviously this is just the Matrix. So, uh, what we will do is we're going to leave the, we'll put the box down flat first. And with all high-end graphic cards, you get all this loveliness here, where it talks about direct CU, which is direct contact there, sort of technology that they seem to think works. Uh, some cool tech fan technology, which uh, there's two different fan designs on the fans in there. We'll show you that in a bit. And then there's a load, uh, uh, sorry, a color-coded load indicator, as it as they call it, which uh, shows you how much load the, uh, the GPU is under. What else we've got? So we've got a memory defroster. It's actually really good, is that? So what happens is if you if you're running a graphic card under LN2 or in other words liquid nitrogen, uh, what happens is you get memory bugs as they as it's nicknamed, essentially where it, you, the PC would freeze. So you can just unlock that. And uh, well, essentially what you do is you put a Molex connector into the graphic card, and it heats up the memory, which is actually quite genius, really, because uh, obviously you don't want to heat up the card because Essentially, that's how you lose. Con uh, what's the word? That's how you lose uh, conductivity, uh, which is what is used to overclock it. So it's actually quite clever, is that? Uh, so of course we get an Allen two mode, we get a stand mode jumper switch, and uh, which I'll have to show you that really. And then we've got a Digi Viron with uh, fourteen phase super alloy power. Fourteen phases is massive. Um, that's it's, I haven't really overclocked the card yet, um, so. I need to test it out really, but um, so yeah, that's pretty much what the inside of the box is. And there's nothing much to see on the rest of it apart from it says Matrix on pretty much every side, as long with the along with the model number. The only least in important part is probably the bottom of which you can already see, so you don't need to see the box anymore. So what we'll do is we will open this up. And of course I'll face it to the camera because that's a good idea. If I open it, you know. Of course, you would assume that the card is there, and it's a little bit dusty because we've already been using it. And I decided to re-record this because it was shy. So there's that story. And did I put this in upside down? I think I'm I'm back in upside down. I should say. focus on this. So I'm only that side, as long as well could be a bit of a bad idea. Um, okay. What we'll do, I'm gonna alter the camera just slightly. And I should be back with you in literally a tick. Right then folks, so obviously I'll put the camera in a different angle. Now we'll just turn that off. And I'll well just turn this off now. So there we go, so we've got the card there as you may be able to see. Uh, here, we're going to start with the card last, actually. And here we've got a... Do -do, what do you call them? I'm going to open these, really, because it would just be pointless. Um, essentially, what this is... Just to check something on the camera before I say yes or no. Essentially, what these are... These are two 6-pins to 8-pin graphic card connectors. So essentially, what you do... Let's say you have um, two 6-pins from your graphic card, I'm sorry, from your power supply. And what you do is you put the two of them in there and then it turns it into an 8-pin. So you've got two of those because it has two 8-pin connectors to power the graphic card. So, um, fair enough, there's a reasonable idea. They used to, what they used to do, they used to have two Molex connectors to a graphic card connector, like an 8-pin. Like two Molex connectors to an 8-pin, which essentially was a bad idea because... The reason for it was because... Um, essentially, only low-end power supplies would, wouldn't have the graphic card connectors. Um, or like the 8 pins, or even the amount of 8 pins that would be required for this. Which basically means that that power supply generally isn't designed to be able to power such a gra uh, such a high intense uh, sort of graphic card. So, it was a bad idea to have those. So to have these instead, 6 pins to 8 pins, it's a much better idea. I'm glad that's in here. Uh, but technically still, if you can afford this, you shouldn't need those. So, um, 
So it's a more pointless thing gone to a still a pointless but not so pointless sort of thing. A lot of you may not be very knowledgeable on this to know know on this or not. So obviously that's a driver disc. I don't use that. Get the latest ones on the website. Speed setup. Look at that. Also, it's a graphic card. All you do is put it in your freaking rig. Um, what's in here? Oh, add that speed up there. No? <laughs> you tell everybody I had this out. So, I'm going to move that out of the way, and what we're going to do, we're going to alter the camera still a bit more. Just bear with me, and we'll, we'll be back in a tick. And the fuck, so of course, before you actually put it in your ring, you've got to remove these things, which are nice and. Um, I don't even know why I even kept these. Um, just in case I wanted to do or needed to do this again. Um, so obviously, with graphic cards you can have fans, and we have two. Uh, these, I uh, should have got a turn measure really, but I do believe these are 92mm, and that's alright actually, no, I think they're 10, uh, 10cm in width, so they're actually quite good really. I mean, clearly we've got two different fan designs. Uh, these sort of angles generally are good for static pressure, and this is good for airflow. Generally that's sort of like the fan design sort of standards of what's been set in the past. So obviously here we've got heat pipes, uh, we've got two 8mm pipes here and here, another 6mm, I'm not sure if that's 6 mil well anyway. Uh, so yeah, uh, what else have we got? So obviously fans with, can't see the uh, the heat sink, but well, if you look carefully enough you'll be able to see them uh, within the fans, of course. But the connectors we've got, we've got uh, two DVIDs, we've got a uh, HDMI, and I've also got a display port, and I shall allow you to look at that for a moment. Of course, that's uh, evidently there. Um, the design's pretty cool, actually, if I'm honest. What really does irritate me, though, would be the edge here, and then the edge here. I just have it sort of somewhat straight. Although it's pretty cool, though, don't get me wrong, but it's, it's a bit weird. Um, I'll have a look at the back as well. Of course, well, not the back, the front, you could call it. Um, so, obviously, that's the load indicator there. What happens is uh, that lights up. Uh, don't remember that. Uh, blue uh, for sort of idling, and green for sort of mid level, orange, and then red. It might not mean orange, it might just go straight to red. Don't quite remember. And actually, no, that's the wrong box. Cut this bit out. Yeah, so there is. Yeah, so there is. It's green, blue, yellow, and red. I like orange and red. Um, the colours aren't particularly well done anyway. It's LEDs and it's freaking companies like this that don't do it very well anyway. So obviously we've got a heat pipe. No, not heat pipe. Sorry, a heat sink here as well. Pretty good actually. I mean, Asus Matrix. It, it looks. It looks pretty mint really. You don't really see these that much, that often. But uh, yeah, I'll have to show you some more of the card obviously. Um, although that's going to require being much closer. Okay, so that thing there, next to my phone, that is the LN2 Liquid Nitrogen 2 Standard Mode Adapter. Why very, 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 very teeny, but there is a switch there. It does say on the back that it is a switch. My camera's not going to focus for hell, but... Oh well. Uh, there, of course, we've got the two 8-pin connectors, connector again, and the reason why it's upside down is because the card is upside down technically. And on the back, safe mode, yay. Molex, yay. And what else have we got? So obviously there was the actual Molex connector for the heat, but of course there is the actual switch for it to go on and off. Uh, so technically this could be served as extra power as well, I'd assume, if that switch is off. Um, so yeah, that's how that works. So obviously 
uh, you'd be better off putting this in something like a, a far more recent sort of rig, say uh, something along the lines of something with PCIe, PCIe three. You'd do far better with something like that. Uh, but what I'll do for the moment, while well, I chit chat you to, while well, I chit chat, chat bleh, while I chit chat to you about what I think of the card, we're going to discuss it further. Um, so, I mean, like I said, the fan designs, it, it looks alright, I mean, but it does kind of annoy me that this fan's a bit different to that one. And what's with this sort of, like, circular thing inside a circular thing? It's a bit weird. Um, what you could argue about as well is the load indicator. I mean, it's a red graphic card, why do you want it blue when you're just doing freaking Microsoft Word or something? Uh, you should have the option to turn that off, and I think I will have to actually have to look into that myself. Don't think it's done, but hey, eh, what the hell? Um, so the backplate that's nice, nice, that's nice, that's a nice addition. Uh, you don't see that often enough, really. So I'm um, glad to see that. Uh, one thing as well, I'll mention. Um, I actually, re I actually did review this already, but the video was so crap. Pedro would not have accepted it. So essentially, I've redone it now. Um, so what? So essentially, what I inquired at. Uh, just before the review of the last time I reviewed it, was whether or not this card was actually compatible with the mortar block, of which is compatible with the Matrix Platinum. So I inquired about it just before the review, and so essentially I ended up getting in touch with the um, head um, designer of EK Water Blocks, and uh, he confirms himself that it is exactly the same uh, PCB printed circuit board. And it should be compatible visually, as there's uh, there's cards that are physically compatible because I've checked them. Then there's cards that are visually uh, compatible because they look the same. So although it does sound slightly unreliable, it is pretty much 99% there all the time. So I mean, the problem you could see as well is it would be compatible because what would be the point in making a different PCB for an almost identical card? What would be the point? I mean, you could also say as well is, um, well, uh, why would they make different PCBs? It's the same card. Well, the problem is, on the normal reference card from AMD, you don't actually get 14 phases, you don't get these fans, you don't get bigger heat sinks, and you do get, you do get 95 maximum degrees uh, from the reference card. It was terrible. But uh, technically, we've now got the 390X, which is technically the same card with an 8 gig of RAM. Um, and then you've got the 3RX as well, which is quite exciting, really. I haven't looked into it enough because I can't afford it, and I don't want to look into it if I can't afford it. Um, but I mean, at the moment, uh, in this market at the moment, how it stands, people are going to be getting this to think that, um, well, people were getting this to think that, oh yeah, I've got the bestest 290X for like 250 quid. Um, that was before the 390X and the Fury X came out, because that was it was a good buy of this before those two came out. It was an absolute bargain, it was 240 quid was this. So it was one heck of a buy. Um, and I mean, it's a decent card, I mean, um, yeah, you could say with things like Minecraft, it's pretty crap. I mean, I'd, I would be using a 128 um, times texture pack on Minecraft and getting a maximum of sort of like 70 or 80 FPS, which is still decent, bear in mind, but I mean, with my 750 Ti, I got about an extra third of that, and that's a third of the price, or half the price. And I mean, in terms of Minecraft, just go, just go in the video, just, just go in the video, uh, end of. Um, it's, a quite, it's, an epic, it's an epic card, really. I mean, I haven't tested it to, to, its, full, um, to its full standards that it sets. Um, because, I mean, Minecraft, it still has a loading indicator for blue on it, uh, which uh, pretty much shows you why. I mean, for data mine, it's pretty good. I mean, this will earn you probably $10, depending on whatever you do. I mean, if you, like, if you uh, mine Litecoin, you'll probably get $15 a month from it um, at the moment as the difficulty stands. Um, so it's not bad buy really. Um, yeah, so I reckon what we'll do, we'll finalise it there, and we'll see what happens. So, thank you very much. This is Jacob from Black Apple, and uh, yeah, I shall see you in the next video. Uh, don't forget, good good idea for you. If you want to, because of course there's going to be 14 YouTubers on this same YouTube channel at the moment as it stands. A good idea. I mean, if you want to be looking through my videos, check the playlists. Massive idea. And uh, not to mention as well. <laughs>